Do you believe? Gina was alive! I was flabbergasted to find her after thinking I'd lost her forever. As for the mystery we were trying to solve, we were almost worse off than in the beginning. All we had was a human finger and a bottle of formaldehyde, and that was an even greater mystery than the crucifix itself. Thank goodness I could count on Mama Dorita's help, which was more than just fixing up Gina's leg. Now then, a bit of rest while the master plaster I've placed on her takes effect. And she'll be just like new in a short while. In the meantime, your little girlfriend had better stay here and not move a step. Thank you so much, Mama Dorita. You are so kind, ma'am. Tenada, you said your name was Brian, right? Uh, yes, ma'am. Brian. Brian Basco. Muy bien, Brian. Something tells me you are also in need of my help. What can I do for you? And please, stop calling me ma'am. Well, ma'am, I, I mean miss. I need to speak with a dead person. Do you mean speak with a spirit of a dead person? Very well, I can help you with that. However, you must know that in addition to myself, I will need a medium while I perform the call to the other side. Furthermore, experience tells me that it is of the utmost importance for the success of the seance that a person with close emotional ties to the spirit remain present. To spice things up a bit, if you catch my drift, of course, you must keep in mind that you may wish to communicate with the unliving, but the unliving may not wish to communicate with you. As for the person with close emotional ties to the spirit, there's no problem. That person is Gina. Very well then, that problem is solved. All we have to take care of is the topic of the medium. Why do we need a medium? Look, spirits are intangible entities, and as such, they cannot produce any sounds whatsoever, unless they enter into the body of a living person and use it in order to speak. That is what mediums are for. They are referred to as horses in certain cultures. Where can I find a medium around here? I used to work with a woman from Nakozari, a town south of the Mexican border. She was an excellent medium, but one day we experienced a bit of a rough sound, and she swore never to work as a medium again. Besides the woman from Nakozari, I don't know of anyone else around here. What about using Oscar as a medium? Impossible. Oscar is a marvelous person but he is in no way prepared to act as a medium. I think I could be a medium. You? I think not. Come closer and look into my eyes. No, you cannot. Your eyes reveal that you are unprepared to lower your level of consciousness enough to fall into a trance. Okay, I see what you mean. I am delighted. How did Oscar start working for you? Well, I can't tell you anything about Oscar's past life. That is his own business, and it is up to him to speak about it if he wishes. What I can tell you is that his life had gone astray when I made him. He was like a boy lost in the woods, with no idea where to turn. I did what I could to help him, because I immediately sensed a pure soul trapped inside that strong, huge body. He is very grateful to me, and that is why he insists on remaining by my side. I have told him time and again to get on with his life and forget about me, but he says his only mission in life is to stick by me and serve me in every possible way. I'd like to see Gina. Go ahead. You know where to find her. Gina! Brian, hi. Hey, you shouldn't move that leg too much. Mama Dorita says you'll heal in no time, as long as you rest. I'm just a bit nervous. The concoction that woman put on my leg is really making me itch. Plus, I can't stop thinking about what you told me inside the mine as we were coming here. Especially the part about the human finger in the bottle of formaldehyde. My god, Brian, what are we gonna do now? Well, I've been giving it some thought, and all I can think of is one thing. What do you propose? Look, I can't stop thinking about something that Indian chief told me. That Wapu something guy? Wapuchim, yeah. I asked him what that bottle with the finger meant, and he said that the man who took it there should answer that question. 
I told him, that guy is dead. But Wapuchim said that wasn't necessarily an obstacle. You mean we should talk with... Yes, with your father. I know it'll be hard for you, but I don't see any other way out. I understand. Don't worry about it. But do you really think we can speak with a dead person? Just a few days ago, I would have answered you with a resounding no. But now, after all the things that have happened to me, and what I've seen since we met, I don't know. I think almost anything is possible. Besides, what harm can it do to try? I guess none. <laughs> what have we got to lose? But how in the world will we do it? With the help of Mama Dorita. She's knowledgeable about these things. However, there's one thing that concerns me. Wapuchim said that the person who hid the bottle in the sacred crypt had Hopi blood. So it couldn't have been your father. Oh, yeah. No, of course not. It couldn't be him. Well, I suppose there are more people mixed up in this strange story. Yeah, I guess that's it. Anyway, your dad has to be able to explain everything. I'm sure he can. So when should we do it? I have to get a medium for the seance. OK. Well, keep me informed, please. How are you feeling? Better and better. I must admit, Mama Dorita knows what she's doing. I'm out of here. I have to work on finding a medium. That's OK. I hate having to stay here without moving and without helping you. You just have to think about healing as fast as you can. See you later. Be careful. Bye-bye. to the Hopi village, did you? Come on, get up here right away and tell me how you did it. Okay, I'm coming. How did you find out? News gets around fast. And I also know you didn't come back from the Hopi village alone. You didn't tell me about the girl. You see, I thought she was dead. And I didn't feel like talking about it. Oh, I think there are lots of things you'd rather not talk to me about. Don't you think it's time you told me the truth about how you got here? Well, all right. But I'm warning you, it's a crazy story. Oh, don't worry. All the better. Here goes. Three days ago, I brought it all up. Ryan is at Mama Dorita's house letting her leg heal while I try to figure out the meaning of a bottle of formaldehyde with the human finger floating inside. That's all. You didn't believe a word I said, did you? No, you're wrong. I know when someone lies to me, and you weren't lying. Plus, Brian, <laughs> I kind of like you. You can count on me to give you a hand with whatever you need. That's great, Sushi. Thanks. Sushi, I'm sorry for disturbing you. No problem. Computer, but what exactly are you doing? I'm a computer expert and, well, let's just say I'm especially interested in everything involving the internet. Oh, you mean you spend all day surfing the net? Oh no, I assure you I do much more than just surf the net. Do you remember that scandal in the government a few months ago? Because a hacker broke into the system and showed it was not invincible? Yeah, of course I remember. That was big news. Didn't the hacker leave behind a signature, like Jane something? Janie Guitar. Yeah, that's it. Hey, so it was you. Are you a hacker? I sure am. And to be honest, I think I'm the best of all. Unbelievable. Actually, despite the pseudonym, I always thought Janie Guitar was a man. Typical chauvinistic attitude. Well, you should know that there are many females among the most famous hackers in the world. Have you heard of the A-Team? Of course, those guys have created some major trouble. Those guys? No. They are two sisters, Alba and Erin, and they're very good friends of mine. Those gals are hot stuff, let me tell you. You think I should have gone to Berkeley instead of getting mixed up in this? The question is, is that what you think? 
I don't think so. You know you couldn't lead this half solved. If you had, you would have spent the rest of your life wondering what would have happened if you'd stuck to it. Anyway, Sushi, we'll talk later. All right, see you later. I'd say their processor's used for databases. This is no simple operation Sushi's got set up here. Those speakers look mighty powerful. I don't know what each of these things does, but that thing over there looks like a ham radio with some kind of radar for scanning incoming signals. It's not lit. What for? It's not at all cold. Let's see. A scanner, a printer, a laptop, a digital clock, and a plant. A cactus, to be precise. That is one cool item. What would I gain by moving it around? I see Sushi has other hobbies besides computers. I'd love to, but I can't play a note. However, with the piano, I have done a thing or two. That guy over there must be Rutger. Hello, Rutger, right? Yeah, and you're Brian, I bet. Saturn's told me about you. By the way, that helmet you gave me is way cool. You wouldn't happen to have another one for me, would ya? No, sorry, I only had that one. Well, if you ever come across another one, Keep Mr. Rutger in mind. Sure thing. Awesome, man. Hey, that music you were playing sounded really neat. You thought it was cool? Playing the bongos totally mellows me out. It's my hobby, you know. The greenhouse you've set up here is really something. Thanks, man. Plants are my life. That is the truth. I've mostly got African spices in here. You know why? Because Africa is the mother of life. I was thinking, you wouldn't happen to know of a plant or something like that that would help a person go into a trance, would you? To enter a trance? You mean to trip out, right? I have some knowledge in that area. Do you think you could prepare me some of that? I could, but look, I don't know if you're aware of how things work around here. Oh, yeah. I should give you something in exchange. That's it, right? You got it. And what might that something be? Hmm, I don't know. I don't really need anything. Something I might like, you know. Could you tell me exactly what the Rastafarian beliefs consists of? No. I'll just go on my way, Wrecker. See ya. See ya. Yeah, I think that might be the thing to do. Hey, Rucker. Hey, what's up? I believe I have something you might be interested in. Let me see, man. Ah, uh, yes. It's a fine Hopi axe pipe. Very nice, man. I'm glad you like it. Do we have a deal, then? The pipe, in exchange for preparing what we talked about. Oh, yes. It's a deal. This is sweet as honey. Take a puff. No, thanks. I don't smoke. Listen, didn't you want some herbal pleasure to lighten you up a bit? Yeah, but... Well, this is the thing. Smoke. Okay. I'm not used to this, so uh, what drag will do? Whoa. I feel dizzy already. I better get out of here fast. I believe I'm ready to act as a medium. Hmm, let's see. Show me your eyes. No, 
a bit better, but no. I must say your disposition for lowering consciousness enough to go into a trance has improved. But you still don't seem adequately prepared. Well, I... By a Hey, Rucker. Hey, what's up? That stuff you put in the pipe didn't work. I need something a bit stronger. More powerful, huh? Hmm. I think I know what you need. I was just recently studying some old Indian shaman recipes. There is one that the Hopi tribe's medicine men used to use. Have you heard of them Hopi Indians? Yeah, I've heard something about it. Apparently, these Hopi medicine men used to make a brew that was mighty strong. They said they used it to help their spirit leave their body and be able to get closer to Kichi Manitou, the great spirit. That is just what I need. Can you make it for me? I'm afraid not. I have all the ingredients except one, the most essential of all, the Yawaskel. Yawaskel? Yeah. You get it from inside these pods that grow on a plant which grows in this area. The problem is, I haven't been able to find that plant anywhere, even though I've searched throughout the region for weeks. Seems this crazy plant only grows on sacred Hopi lands. Huh. And do you know what the Yawaskal looks like? From the drawings I've seen, they're bumpy bowls of a dark red color. I've studied the topic quite a bit, and though I've never seen any of those bowls myself, I'm sure I could identify one if I saw it. Hmm. Very interesting, Rucker. I've got to go now. Let's keep talking about this later. Sure thing, man. Hmm. I still have the branch I tore off the outside of the sacred crypt. And now that I've taken a closer look, there's some pods on the stem. Yeah, what luck! I bet that plant I took the branch off of is precisely the one Rucker was talking about. I'll pull the pods off the branch. Done. Now I should open them and see if they contain those famous little red balls. These pods are really hard. There's no way I can open them with my hands. I need something else to tear them open. Okay, let's take one more peek to see what I can find. This scalpel may be just what I was looking for. Yeah, using the scalpel, I can open the pods up and get the little Yawaskal balls out. Ugh, that didn't work. These pods are as hard as a rock. It's not lit. What for? Oh. 
poker's made of iron and looks pretty strong. They're just decorative. I wonder why sushi has lit the fire at this time of year. Yeah, I may use it. It's been covered with ash and soot by the fire, but it's not in bad shape. Why do that? The fire's burning nicely. I don't think that'll work. Good idea! If I heat up the scalpel, it'll definitely cut better. I'll leave it in there for a few seconds to make it nice and hot. All right, that should do the trick. Ow! I gotta be careful. It's burning hot. All right, this time the pods will yield to my strength. Finally, now I've got those silly Yawaskal balls. And just in time, the scalpel's cooled down and is now at room temperature. Good thing I cut through the pods when I did. Whoa, Rucker's gonna flip when he sees this. Hey, Rucker. Hey, what's up? You'll never believe it. What? I've got some Yawaska balls. No way, brother. Don't believe me? Seeing is believing. Man. You're right, it's prime Yawaska. Told you so. Can you make that Hopi brew you told me about now? Of course, I'll get right to it. Perfect, I'll let you work then. Well, a long time seems to have gone by. I think that Rucker must have that brew ready. Rucker! Yeah, I'm over here, man. Is it finished? I have the finished product, and I'm telling you right now, this is some great day stuff. Those Hopis sure knew what they were doing. If this doesn't put you into orbit, I don't know what will, my friend. Okay, does this taste bad? Bad? No way. These guys even made their herbal infusions taste delicious. Drink with no fear, man. Yeah, I can feel it already. It's as if uh, I were levitating. I'm leaving before the effects get any stronger. Okay, sir, but I'm drinking the leftovers. Now I know I'm prepared enough to become a medium. You don't give up, do you? Very well, let me look into your eyes. Hmm, you win, Brian. I think you will be able. Your eyes have revealed this. Good, your mind is ready. Now, we must prepare your soul. Prepare my soul? It is indispensable in case something goes wrong. What do you mean by that? I didn't think this was dangerous. And it is not, provided a medium is truly prepared. Believe me, preparing your soul properly will keep you from fear. Okay already, fine. What do I have to do? Kneel before the altar. Here? Yes, on your knees. Repeat after me. Okay. San Luciano, I pray that you care for my soul while it is absent from my body. San Luciano, I pray that you care for my soul while it is absent from my body. Santa Brigida, protect me with your cloak and do not allow the devil to take over my body. Santa Brigida, protect me with your cloak and do not allow the devil to take over my body. Jesus, my soul is clean and ready to travel to your side if you wish it to be so. Jesus, 
My soul is clean and ready to travel to your side if you wish it to be so. Ino, please rise. Okay, should I bring in Gina so we can get this over with? Not so fast. We won't be doing it here. We are going to the Well of Souls. Where? Do not worry, it's a proper place. Do you see the well to my right? That is a place. Go. Do we really have to go in there? Yes, we do. Think no longer and go in. Vamonos! You will see a seat inside of our pentagram. Sit in it and prepare your mind. Oscar will help Gina and me down. All right, whatever you say. Let's begin. Now, Brian, it is important for you to stay relaxed. Was it really necessary to tie me to the chair? See, si, believe me. It was for your own safety, I assure you. Now, stare into my eyes, por favor. All the tension is flowing out of your body. You are relaxed, more and more relaxed. You feel good, muy bien. I am going to count to three, and when I finish, you will fall into a deep slumber. One, two, three. We are here to contact the being from the other side. We have the will and the medium. We have the will and the medium. The medium awaits in the center of the pentagram. Someone from this plane wishes to speak with that being. We invoke that being with all due respect. We have the will and the medium. Gina, it's your turn. Speak with that spirit. Tell him you want to talk with him. Johnny? Johnny the Indian, it's me, Gina. I need to talk with you. You were about to tell me something and we were interrupted. Now we have a chance to finish our conversation. Johnny, it's me, Gina. Please talk to me. You. Yes, I remember. We were talking at the Pink Iguana when those thugs showed up, but I don't remember anything more. Where have I been? It's dark here, and I'm freezing. Johnny, look, you're... you're... locked up. The Sandretti's locked you into the basement under the storeroom in the Pink Iguana. Damn them. Gina, you've got to help me. Get me out of here, and I'll take you with me. We'll be rich, Kel, and we'll live like kings. So, it's true? You kept the money from the truck heist? Of course I did. I pulled one over on those bastards. I'll share the cash with you, baby. Just get me out of here fast. Now's not a good time. There's guards all over the place. I'll come get you out later. But tell me, where did you hide the money? The Sandretti's haven't been able to find a clue. <laughs> of course they haven't found it. You think I'm an idiot? Those evildoers would never find the money. <laughs> you are so sly, Johnny. Where is it hidden? Yeah, kiddo. Too smart to trust you, too. I'm not telling you one more word. Get me out of here, and I'll give you your piece of the pie. Mm, okay. All right. I'll come back in a while and help you escape. I'll be waiting. Make it quick. Johnny? Johnny? He has departed. And I must say I don't like what I saw one bit. Gina, you have toyed with a spirit, and that can be very dangerous. Hope you don't regret it later on. But let us set that topic aside. Brian is exhausted and needs to rest. Oscar, untie Brian and take him to my room. Lay him on the bed and let him sleep as long as he needs. Gina! Oscar put you in bed. You've been asleep for nearly 24 hours. The effort of being a medium left you exhausted. Do you remember anything that happened in the Well of Souls? Enough! Everything seemed like a dream. It was like I was floating above your heads. But I perfectly remember that you didn't invoke your father. No, it was Johnny. Johnny the Indian. That's it. 
Well, don't you think you owe me an explanation? Yes, I guess so. Well, here goes. Remember everything I told you about my father's death in the hospital? Yeah, of course I remember. Well, it wasn't exactly true. You mean, your father didn't? No, he's perfectly fine. And he doesn't work for the government, like I said. He breeds sheep in Marion Bridge, Utah. So, you invented all of that? Not exactly. Let me explain. I really did work at the Pink Iguana, but I wasn't really a singer. I performed in another type of show. That night, when my act was over, I talked to Johnny the Indian, a pretty shady fellow who had just gotten out on parole. Johnny had had a few too many. He told me he was going to start a new life and that I should go with him. He showed me the crucifix he wore around his neck the whole four years he spent in prison and said it was the key that would open the door to that new life. He was drunk, and I didn't take him very seriously. I thought the guy was embracing Christianity or something like that. And then, the Sandretti brothers showed up. Johnny asked me to keep the crucifix for him and to disappear before they saw me. Everything I told you about my father's death in the storeroom of the pink iguana was true. But it wasn't my father they killed. It was Johnny. They interrogated him and beat him to a pulp. I'd heard of the Sandretti brothers and how dangerous they are. But that night, I saw it with my own eyes. When I saw them kill Johnny, I couldn't help but scream. So they found me out and I ran as fast as I could down the alley. But why were they interrogating him? What did he do? Well, Johnny had just spent four years in the slammer for holding up a truck. The whole heist was set up by the Sandrettis. Johnny was part of the group that did the job. In the beginning, the theft was a success, a fast robbery with no deaths or injuries. The money was supposed to be handed over to the Sandrettis in a garage a few hours later, but someone set a trap. The garage was full of cops, and the thieves were arrested. Luckily for them, the Sandrettis didn't show up personally, so no one could prove they were involved. However, they didn't catch all the thieves. For some reason, Johnny managed to get away, and they didn't find him till two days later near the Mexican border. More importantly, the money from the robbery never appeared. What do you mean? It wasn't in the garage, and Johnny didn't have it when they arrested him. He swore he escaped from the garage without taking a cent. Despite all their investigations, the police never found the cash. From what I heard the night they killed Johnny, the Sandretti suspected he'd kept the money and that he was the one who informed the cops and set up the raid on the garage. They thought he'd hidden the dough somewhere during the two days he was hiding out and that he had let himself get caught so the Sandrettis wouldn't suspect anything. You think someone with that much money would allow himself to be caught knowing he'd be put away for years? Yeah, if he didn't have any other choice. He knew that if he ran off with the money, the Sandrettis would find out and hunt him down long before the police did. He must have thought 20 million bucks were well worth four years in prison. 20 million? 20 million. No doubt Johnny thought that by the time he was released, the Sandrettis would have forgotten the whole story and that he could enjoy a great retirement. But things didn't work out that way. The Sandrettis don't forget 20 million bucks just because, and they were looking for him the day he got out of jail. So when the Sandrettis interrogated him, did they get the truth out of him? No, that animal Gustav killed him too fast, and Johnny never acknowledged having kept the money. So we don't know if Johnny really even had it. Oh, yes, we do. He told me so through your mouth during the seance. The bad thing is I couldn't get him to tell me where he hid the money. So, all you were really interested in the whole time was getting that money, huh? No, well, at least not at first. I was just trying to save my life. I had been an eyewitness to a murder and knew that they would snuff me out to keep me from talking. After that, I admit I thought if we found the money, I could start a new life far from the Sandrettis. <laughs> is that so terrible? Depends on how you look at it. What I don't understand is why they didn't knock us off in Chicago when they had us trapped in the museum. Someone at the Pink Iguana probably told them Johnny had talked to me before they killed him. They must have thought I knew something about the money. And they wanted to get it out of me. Lucky you were so great and got us out of that awful cabin. Oh, don't suck up to me now. You've been fooling me all this time. I'm such an idiot. I walked right into your trap. Please, Brian, you've got to forgive me. I swear I never wanted to lie to you, but I was scared to death. And I was afraid you wouldn't help me if I told you the truth. Well, you're wrong there. I'm so stupid I'd have helped you anyway. But this is the end of it. 
I'm leaving straight for California, and you? No, please. You know they'll kill me. Sooner or later, they'll find me and do me in. My only chance is to find the money and use it to start a new life. You know that. Please don't leave me alone now. Help me. Okay. I'll help you find that cursed money. And then, I never want to see you again as long as I live. Don't say that. I really care about you. Oh, please. Don't play me for a sucker again. I already said I'd help you. Save the sorry act for the theater. Don't believe me if you don't want to, but I'm being sincere. Besides, if we find the money, half will be yours. I don't want a dime of that money. Do whatever you want. Well, we know Johnny safeguarded the money somewhere nearby. And no matter how strange it seems, the finger in the bottle must have something to do with it. But where should we start to look? Look, while you were asleep, I remembered something Johnny told me years ago, before the robbery. What? He said that he used to take time off between jobs to spend a few days in his homeland in Arizona, in an old trailer where he used to live before going to New York. That trailer can't be very far from here. And if we find it, maybe there'll be some clues about the money inside. Yeah, that sounds like a good idea. Well, I'll start with that and try to find that trailer. I'm going with you. My leg is much better. No way. You haven't recovered yet, and I don't want to have to carry you. Are you going to be mad at me for the rest of your life? No, because I plan on removing you from it soon. Fine, just go alone if my company annoys you. I'm leaving, but don't worry. I'll be back. Goodbye. I think the first thing I'll do is go see Sushi. I've got to speak with someone I can trust about all of this. Hi, Sushi. Hi, Brian. How's it going? Did you find anything out? Actually, I did, but I'm not sure whether I'm too happy about it. Why's that? What happened? Everything Gina told me to wrap me up in this mess has turned out to be a pack of lies. Seriously? Tell all. Look, do you remember about Gina's father? Yeah, the poor girl saw them murder him in cold blood right before her very eyes. Well, forget about the murder. The old guy is living peacefully, breeding sheep in Marion Bridge, Utah. What? And that's when Gina told me the truth. She can't return to New York because she wouldn't last two days. She plans to have me help her find the money that Johnny stole so she can start a new life. I don't know what to do. I'm not interested in the money, but I don't want to leave Gina high and dry either. Besides, my life isn't worth much more than Gina's at this point. Well, the way I look at it, that money has no owner at this point. It'd be better for Gina to keep it and start that new life than to have it end up in the hands of those awful Sandretti mob guys. As for the bank the money was stolen from, I'm sure it got an insurance payoff years ago, so nobody will lose out. I don't know. Ever since I left New York, I feel like I've lost control of my life. I'm like a puppet with someone else pulling my strings. They decide what I can and can't do. Sort of like in those computer games. You know what I mean? Computer adventures? Yeah, I love them. Cheer up, Brian. You know you can count on me for help. Thanks, Sushi. You're wonderful. Anyway... I gotta try and find Johnny's old trailer. We know it's around here somewhere, and I'm sure I'll find clues in it leading me to the money. An old trailer? I don't remember seeing one, but the truth is that I don't leave Douglasville except to go into the city for provisions. Maybe Rutger or Saturn know something. Yeah, I'll go talk to them. See you around, Sushi. Okay, see you soon. Hey, Rucker. Hey, how was that yummy cocktail I made for you? Great, it worked fine. But I assure you, I don't plan on trying it again.
Hey, do you remember seeing a trailer around somewhere during your plant gathering expeditions? A trailer? No, I don't remember seeing any trailer, man. I'll just go on my way, Wrecker. See ya! See ya! Hello, Saturn. How's it going with the Idea Blasting Helmet? Hello, BB. The helmet is excellent, amazing. The only problem is the Great Desequa. The what? The statue I had hanging on the crane. It's disappeared. You wouldn't happen to know anything about that, would you? Me? No, not a clue. It's so odd, don't you think? Yeah, well, I hope it's just one of Rutger's little practical jokes, though he assured me he knows nothing. Don't worry, I'm sure it'll turn up. I hope so. Now that you've got your inspiration back, could you return the helmet to me? Return the idea-forming helmet? Not a chance. A deal is a deal. Hey, when you've gone out looking for raw materials, did you happen to see a trailer? Hmm, I think I recall seeing an old trailer one time. Yes, but it didn't seem like anyone lived in it. It looked abandoned. And where was that, Saturn? Don't you remember? It's really important. Well, let me think. That must have been seven or eight months ago. And at that time, I was involved in a project for which I needed a large quantity of clay. So I was in search of argillaceous zones. By the way, have I mentioned a simply amazing work? The construction of an exact replica of the city of Florence in the second half of the 14th century. Splendor of Florence. It's one of my greatest works. You see, I was trying to capture the spirit that... Listen, Saturn. That's interesting and all, but I'm in kind of a hurry. I'll drop by later so you can fill me in on your great work, but please just tell me where you saw that trailer for now. All right, I shall. It was on the other side of Painted Canyon Gulch, to the south of Douglasville, about one hour away from here. Okay, I hope I can find it. You should really reflect on your life, BB. You always seem to be searching for something you don't have. We'll discuss that later, Saturn. See you soon. Ciao. Hey, Saturn. What? I see you're working on a stone sculpture right now. Yes, I can't tell you exactly what it is that I'm sculpting, but I've been struck with great inspiration. We'll discuss. Ciao. Okay, let's see if I'm able to find that trailer. Ha! There's the trailer. No doubt about it. That's gotta be the one. Okay, let's see what I find around here. What a wreck. I don't think the engine will even start up. Don't see anything interesting on the outside. I'll have to go in and take a look. What a wreck. It's closed. Possible. It's locked up tight. Sure. By using it as a lever, I might get that door open. It worked! I'm in. Let's see what I find inside. Ugh! What a stench! place is a mess. 
I'd better move fast and get out of here as soon as possible. It's as big of a mess as the rest of this disgusting trailer. I wouldn't sleep in that bed for anything in the world. Don't see anything tasty. Just some leftovers and a couple of empty bottles. No, that's okay. What for? The piece of cheese on the third shelf? I think it's already too late to save it. It's just filled with old clothes. I won't find any clues in there. Just old clothes and some blankets. How weird. This looks like a nun's habit. No. Why would I want to take that? Plus, I'm very respectful about that sort of thing. It's full of pe Okay. I'll just rummage through these papers. This looks interesting. It's an advertisement for a bank. That may be where the money is. Sushi, sorry for disturbing you. No problem. I found Johnny's trailer. How cool. And did you find any clues leading to the money? I'm trying. Okay, keep me updated. Anyway, Sushi, we'll talk later. All right, see you later. Sushi. Hey, Brian. Anything newsy? Yeah, I found a brochure for a maximum security bank in the trailer. I'd appreciate it a lot if you could investigate it on the internet and find out about the bank. Sure, that's a cinch. I'm going to finish a little job I'm wrapped up in, and then I'll get right to it. Leave the brochure on the desk, please. Okay. Thanks, Sushi. No problem. I'll report back later. I've got some really juicy news. I'm coming. So, what did you find out? First of all, I investigated what type of bank the brochure you found is for. It's not any conventional bank. The customers rent safety deposit boxes to keep their stuff in. Money, jewelry, antiques, whatever. They don't have to give any explanation at all of what's deposited inside. And I assure you, the place is a veritable fortress. I need not say that there has never been a robbery or even an attempted robbery. Then, do you think Johnny put the money there? Well, it's a possibility. This type of bank charges its customers a fortune. And in turn, they pay astronomical taxes to the government in exchange for certain immunities. I mean, the police have no access to lists of customers or the items on deposit. That undoubtedly makes it a pretty safe place to stash money. Using my amazing skills, I broke into the bank's database. But I didn't see the name Johnny anywhere on the list of customers. That doesn't surprise me. 
If Johnny wanted to hide the money there, I'm sure he was more concerned about throwing the Sandretti's off than the police. But what really gave me a big clue was the security system used at the Mojave Bank. When customers rent a safety deposit box, they receive no key or magnetic card whatsoever. Nothing. What they do is perform a fingerprint analysis. And when customers want to access the box, they just place their index finger on a scanner for the computer to identify their fingerprint. And then they're let in. You catch my drift? Yeah, you're thinking of the bottle of formaldehyde I found in the sacred crypt. There you go. Then I researched the police databases, and I entered Johnny's full name, John Tawangyama. I verified that he showed up dead in a New York alley two days ago. I kept following the lead of his last name, which obviously isn't very common, and I found an interesting bit of info. Four years back, a woman's corpse floated up in the Green Gila River. When they checked her identity, she turned out to be Sister Juana Buenadicha of the Santa Clara Mission in California. She'd been strangled and thrown into the river. A nun? No way! How was she connected to all this? Juana Buenadicha is a name she took when she entered the order. That woman was an Indian, though, and her real name was Mary Tawangyama. Was she related to Johnny? It was his twin sister. Guess what was missing from the body when they found it? I bet it was her right index finger. Bingo! And whose name do you think the safety deposit box at the Mojave Bank was rented to for 10 years? Sister Juana Benedicha? Exactly. It all fits together now. Johnny made his sister rent the safety deposit box at the Mojave Bank and put all the money there. I don't think he planned on killing her in the beginning, but by the end, he was afraid she would betray him while he was in prison. That scoundrel preferred not to risk it, so he strangled his own sister, cut her finger off, and tossed the body into the river. I guess he thought it wouldn't be hard to disguise himself as a nun and use his sister's finger to take out the money when the time came. Hiding the finger in the sacred Hopi crypt seems a bit unlikely, but I think he was running out of time by then, and he needed a safe place to keep the finger for all of the years he was going to be locked up in jail. He knew about the crypt, and it seemed like a good solution. I suppose that what he never counted on was that the Sandretti's would get suspicious and go after him the minute he was released from prison. Good work, Sushi. I'm amazed. Thanks. Well, I don't think there's anything to stop you from taking the money using the plan Johnny already cooked up. Just to be on the safe side, it would be better for Gina to dress up as Juana Buenadicha. She can put on a nun outfit and use the finger. I don't think she'll have any trouble taking out the cash. These banks are famous for not asking lots of questions. Sushi, it's only fair for you to get some of the money. You've definitely earned your share. I don't really need it. No, Brian. You know, I don't like to talk about this, but I've actually got a lot of my own money already. I inherited a truckload and won't be able to spend it all if I live a thousand years. I'm not interested in money, probably because I've never needed it. That's just me. Don't think twice, Brian. Have Gina get the money and start a new life. You just have to get a nun costume, and that shouldn't be a pro- Wait, now I remember. When I was in Johnny's trailer, I saw a nun's habit on a hanger. How evil. I'm sure it was his sister's habit. Well, all the better. Go get that habit and you're ready. But don't leave without saying goodbye. Of course not, Sushi. Before picking up Gina to leave, I'll come by and say farewell. See ya. See ya, Brian. Okay, but it gives me the creeps to take it. Look at that poor woman killed by her own scoundrel of a brother. I think we're in luck. The habit is just Gina's size. Okay, all set. Now for the money. Hey, I hear the sound of an engine in the distance. I think a car is approaching. It might be dangerous. I'd better hide just in case.
No, not now. Those dumb goons, Gustav and Theodore, they found us. Here's the trailer, just like Bob said. Yeah, but I don't think Johnny the Indian was dumb enough to hide the cash here. I don't either, but we better check. Did you see that? Fresh footprints by the door. Do you think they belong to that idiot and that bimbo? They only belong to one person. And by the size of them, they must be his. Something tells me they're close by. They probably split up to try and find where Johnny stashed the dough. I bet they'll come back here. Either together or alone. What if they have the money? Nah, I don't think so. Plus, finding them in this area won't be that easy. This is a huge desert. Let's do a full search of this trailer and wait for a while to see if they show up. What if they don't? Then we'll go out and look for them. And mark my words, we'll find them, whatever it takes. And when we do, they'll wish they'd never been born. Come on! Rotten killers! I've got to do something before those two find us. There's Gustav and Fyodor's car. They must... Did you find anything? Silch, this place is a freaking big sty. Why don't we take off? Let's look for them. They can't be far from here. This area is too big to cover it all. And I bet they'll come back here sooner or later. Let's hope. Well, at least here we won't be in any danger. But sooner or later, they'll get tired of waiting and come looking for us. I better stay one step ahead of them and do something first. Hello, Sushi. Hi, Brian. Do you have the nun's habit yet? I have it, but now we've got new problems. Right when I was leaving the trailer, Gustav and Theodore showed up. They're the Sandretti's henchmen. They almost saw me. Wow! So they're hot on your trail then? No, I'm afraid not. I guess they knew about Johnny's trailer and must have imagined that we would be looking for it too. From what I could hear them say, they plan on waiting in the trailer to see if we show up. Well, that gives you some time to escape. You've got the habit. Now go get the money and drive away fast. I don't know. Now I realize that Gina and I will never be safe. No matter where we go, they'll end up finding us. Hmm. Yeah, I hate to say it, but I think you're right. So, what can you guys do? I don't know yet. The best thing would be to think of a way to get rid of them all forever. You're a smart woman, Sushi. Can't you come up with something? Well, just like that? No. I'll ponder the topic. Maybe between the two of us, we can devise a solution. But there's one thing that concerns me even more. What if those killers decide to leave the trailer and reconnoiter the area? No doubt, they'd quickly find Douglasville. And from what you've told me, they won't hesitate to increase the body count, and that'll help them find you. We're all in danger. Yeah, you're right. We should do something about that. As soon as possible. I'll try to think of something. Then I'll tell you about it. Me too. See you soon. No, that's enough pressure. I don't want to risk having the boiler explode. Yes, a burst of steam blasted out. out the smokestack like the cell key did. Yeah, I can use that. It's not too worn out considering the circumstances.
Oscar? What's up, Brian? Your life has a new mission. I've spoken to Mama Dorita about this, and she fully agrees. Well, what is it? Oscar, you've been named the new Sheriff of Douglasville. Please raise your right hand so I can swear you in. Repeat after me. I promise to defend, with my life if necessary, the laws set down in the Constitution of this nation. I promise to defend, with my wife if necessary, the laws down in that Constitution of this here nation. And I swear I will do everything necessary to ensure that these laws are not violated and to pursue anyone who might attempt to break them. And I swear. I'll do things necessary to ensure them laws aren't violated and to pursue anyone who might attempt to break them. Perfect. Oscar, I hereby officially name you Sheriff of Douglasville. Dandy. Sheriff Oscar, your first mission has already come in. Listen, you've got to go to... Hey, what about my weapon? What? My sheriff's weapon. What kind of law enforcement official can I be without a weapon? Yeah, you're right. Hmm. Of course, your sheriff's weapon. Sorry, I forgot to bring that. I'll go get it. You wait here and I'll be back faster than you can say sheriff. Yes, I know the rifle Sushi shot me with when I got to Douglasville has to be around here somewhere. I know she won't mind if I take it. Now this is looking better. So you were saying? What is my first mission as sheriff? Look, about three miles south of Douglasville, there's a couple of guys creating a ruckus and frightening the locals. You've got to stop them and lock them up in the Douglasville jail. But watch your step, partner. These guys are armed and dangerous. Don't you worry, friend. In the penitentiary, they used to call me Terminator. I'm going after them. Good luck. I'm sure you can do the job, Sheriff. Okay, the best thing to do would be to head for Douglasville and wait there until Oscar's completed his mission. From this window, I'll be able to see Oscar when he arrives. Here comes Gustav and Theodore's car. And Oscar is driving, so I guess everything went okay. Yes, he's pulling them out of the car. And he's tied them up hand and foot. What a tough dude. He's grabbed each of them by one arm and is dragging him into the jail. Whoa, he's so buff. I've got to tell Sushi. Sushi, good news. Really? What is it? Those cursed assassins are now locked away in the town jail. But how did you manage that? It was Oscar. I made him the town sheriff and gave him his first mission, to capture those two killers. No way. <laughs> You're unbelievable, Brian. That big guy Oscar is unbelievable. By the way, I gave him your rifle so he could carry out his mission. You don't mind, do you? No, that's OK. Plus, I won't be needing it anymore. Law and order have been brought back to town. <laughs> <laughs> but seriously, this is all good, but it doesn't solve the real problem. Besides, we're not exactly the murdering types. And even if we were, all we'd achieve by eliminating Gustav and Theodore is for the Sandretis to send more killers after us. Yep, you're right. We've got to think of something to free us of the Sandretis for good. You said it. You know what? I think I'll go and congratulate Oscar and get the pleasure of seeing those two thugs behind bars. Are you coming? No, not right now. You go, and I'll keep thinking of a plan. All right, see you soon. See you soon. Oscar, good work. You managed to catch those two bad guys. Thanks, but I was just doing my job. 
those two bandits thought they could beat me with a little gun and some knives. Yeah, they were really fooling themselves. You locked them up in the cell, right? Yeah, the things they were carrying are in a jail bag on the desk in the office. Perfect, Oscar. You're a real professional. Just doing my work. By the way, Brian, from now on, would you mind calling me Sheriff? Of course not. It would be a pleasure, Sheriff. Hi, guys. You, you're the moron behind all this? Not as much of a moron as you, it seems. This time you've met your match, one would say. Wouldn't you, boys? You mean that orangutan? He caught us off guard. He didn't look dangerous with that silly face. I'd watch my mouth if I were you. If Oscar hears you, I accept no responsibility for his actions. You're some smart aleck kid, but you're out of your league. Stop playing funny boy. You're a dead man. Yeah, deader than that corpse there behind you. I don't think you should be threatening anyone at this point. You should be begging. And speaking of that guy back there, take a good look, because that's how you guys are going to end up. What a waste of time talking to two killers. Okay, examining the stuff those two guys were carrying around may give us some ideas. The canvas is pretty worn out, but I don't think it'll tear. Sushi. Yes, Brian. I brought you everything Gustav and Theodore had on him. Maybe you can use it to investigate on the internet or something like that. Okay, as soon as I have time, I'll take a look at it. Leave it on the table for me, please. All right, it's all inside a jail bag. Okay. Sushi, I'm sorry for disturbing you. No problem. Have you taken a look at Gustav and Fyodor's things? Yeah, but I bet all their papers are fake. I haven't found any information on their past on the Internet. Although, well, there is one thing I discovered. Gustav is a total movie fan. Movie? How do you know? While looking through his wallet, I found a season ticket to the film archives of New York. Can you believe it? That animal is a cinema lover. I don't want to imagine what his favorite films are. You know, movies are what I miss most since moving here. In Boston, I used to go two or three times a week. You like movies? Oh, I do too. I'm a major movie freak. Oh, yeah? So tell me, who is your favorite director? Woody Allen. He's my favorite too. I know it's hard to pick, since there are so many good ones, but which of his movies do you like best? Manhattan Murder Mystery. I love that one. Do you remember the scene where... Hey, wait a minute. I think I've got an idea to solve all this. Just let me think for a minute here, but it should work. Wait, let me organize everything, and then I'll explain. But can't you tell me about your bright idea? No, I'd rather make sure that we have everything we need first. Come back in an hour, okay? Seems like it's been an hour to me. Well? Let me explain. Remember how in Manhattan Murder Mystery they record the husband's voice in order to pretend that he makes a phone call later on? Yeah, sure I remember. My idea is to do something similar. We'll call the Sandrettis pretending to be one of the thugs. There's a cellular phone in Gustav and Theodore's safe. I've looked through it, and there's a number memorized as bosses which is undoubtedly the number they call to report to the Sandretti. We use a more sophisticated system than in the movie. 
a voice emulation program I downloaded once from a website called The Way Secret and Fully Invincible. What would we achieve by calling the Sandrettis and pretending to be the thugs? We'll make them suspect that Gustav and Theodore are intending to keep the cash for themselves. Yeah. That sounds like a good plan. How do we do it? You have to record the thugs' voices so I can enter... It'll analyze them and create a filter which we can use on any voice to make it sound like the voice of those killers. Program is that good? Guaranteed. Meanwhile, you have to record Gina saying something like, You lying murderer, you killed him and now you want to keep the money. Gina is on our side, so we can just use her voice. We don't need to emulate it. Got it? Yeah, but are you sure this is going to work? Of course I am. Don't you worry. Just do your part and leave the rest up to me. There's an MP3 recorder on the table. Go get it and record those voices, please. All right, I will. Okay, don't take too long. Why don't you shut your trap, you Russian retard? Okay, let's do it. Hi, guys. How's it going? What kind of game do you think you're playing, kid? Let us go now, and you might get out of this alive. I'm starving. Aren't you going to feed us? Man, they get better treatment at Shawshank. By this time, the Sandrettis must be asking themselves why we haven't called in for two hours. It won't take them long to send someone out looking for us. Get ready, you worm! Hey, I think I'm ready to re-enter society. Why don't you let me out so I can integrate and start a new life? The first thing I plan to do is go massacre your whole family. Why don't you shut your tr- Darn! Give it a rest, one eye. Come on, boys, don't argue. Cellmates are supposed to get along. Done. Now I have the voices of those two recorded. Well, hello, Gina. Johnny! You tricked me. Hussy, now you're gonna die! Uh, uh, feel uh, now. Uh, feel uh, now. Uh, 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 Calm down. You were asleep. You must have been having a nightmare. Yeah, it was horrible. Johnny was rising from his grave to kill me. There, there. It's all over now. Yeah, good thing you got here and saved me from Johnny. You don't look so angry with me anymore. Well... Let's drop that. Listen, come up with a plan for us to keep the money and get rid of the Sandrettis forever. I need to record you saying, you awful killer, you killed him and now you want to keep the money for yourselves. But what for? Explain it to me. There's no time, Gina, just trust me. Come on, let's rehearse once before recording. Let me remind you of the sentence. You awful killer, you killed him and now you want to keep the money for yourselves. You awful lying killer, you killed him, and now you want to keep the money for yourselves. That was pretty bad, Gina. When you lied to me, you did a much better job. Come on, try again. You lying killer. You killed him, and now, now you want to keep the money for yourselves. Better, but it still doesn't sound real. Try it once more. You lying killer. You killed him, and now you want to keep the money for yourselves. Well, it's no Oscar performance, but it'll do. Wait for me to start recording, and say it again. You lying killer. You killed him, and now you want to keep the money for yourselves. Okay, I'm leaving. There's no time to lose. Get ready. I'll come back for you shortly, and we'll go find the money. Aren't you going to tell me your plans? Later. I promise. Right now, I have to leave. All right, but don't take long, please. No, don't worry. See you soon. See you. Now it's all recorded. I should take the recorder to Sushi ASAP so she can implement the plan.
Hey, Sushi. Hi. Did you get the recordings? Yes, I have it all. Excellent. Leave the recorder on the desk and give me an hour to organize everything. Whatever you say. See you in an hour. Bye. Seems like it's been an hour to me. All set? All set. Look at this. Brian, you're a bag of pond scum. How does it sound? Wonderful, Sushi. And you said I was unbelievable. You're the amazing one. Well, it's no big deal. I ended up using Gustav's voice because he seemed like the thug leaving the show. We'll make the call using my computer. But the computer has a system that will make them think they're receiving the call from Gustav and Theodore's cell phone. I've also prepared the sample of Gina with a few touch-ups, including gunshot sound effects I added in. Let's go. I hope everything turns out okay. I'm sure it will, Sushi. I trust you. About time. What the heck is up? We nabbed him. Well, have you gotten the information out of him? It's what we suspected, boss. Johnny told that floozy money was hidden before we did away with him. I knew it. So, what about the cash? Do you have it back? Bad news, Chief. The money's history. What? What do you mean it's history? Let me explain, boss. When we got here and found that bimbo and her little friend, we decided to follow them without them seeing us. You know, to see if they'd lead us to the cash. And? And it worked, boss. We followed them to an old abandoned mine. And apparently that's where Johnny hid the booty after the heist. We caught him by surprise exiting the mine with two huge trunks. But this stupid mule Theodore jumped the gun, as usual, and shot too soon. You useless, incompetent donkey! Theodore missed and they ran back into the mine. We chased after him and trapped him at the end of the mine shaft full of boxes. Boxes of dynamite, that is. I screamed at Theodore, don't shoot! But that dim wit of a Russian had already fired a gunload of bullets. The whole place turned into an inferno in one second. We ran out and escaped from the mine by an inch. Stupid morons. The whole mine blew to bits with the floozy and that idiot inside. And the money, unfortunately. I'm sorry, boss. The way we left that place, there was no way to get the money out, and... You lying killer. You killed him, and now you want to keep the money for yourself. What was that? Gustav, you filthy rat! That was the girl who was screaming! Gustav! Gustav! You won't steal a cent from me! Perfect! The seed has been sown! Cool! Oh, and thanks for calling me an idiot. I'm sorry, but it has to be credible. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't matter. This came off great. It sure did. Excuse my lack of modesty, but I did a wonderful job here. And you don't even know about the icing on the cake yet. What icing? Listen, and try not to fall to the floor and kiss my feet. I hacked into a Swiss bank and created an account under Gustav and Theodore's names with a balance of $20 million. I printed up a receipt from the account and stuck it into Gustav's wallet. It's hidden well enough that he won't find it before the right time. Tomorrow, I'll instruct Oscar to take the killers out of the jail, blindfold them, and take them far away from here. I'll tell him to abandon them on some remote highway, but to make sure he gives them their stuff back first. Either I'm way off here, or the Sandrettis will soon find them. I wouldn't want to be in their skin when the Sandrettis find the receipt from the Swiss bank. Simply brilliant, Sushi. You never cease to amaze me. The only thing is, I'll have to lend Oscar the thug's car. I thought I'd use it myself to pick up Gina and go straight to the Mojave Bank before having a panic attack, but... Oh, take it. It doesn't matter. Oscar can just take one of my Hummers tomorrow. One of your Hummers? Yeah, I have three in the barn, so that's all worked out. Anyway, let me tell you something. I hate goodbyes. I always end up in tears. So I'd rather just stay here by my computer instead of watching you leave, OK? Thanks for everything, Sushi. I'll never forget you. Goodbye, Brian. Please come back someday and send me some email. My address is sushidouglas at hotmail.com. Of course I'll write to you, Sushi. So long. Farewell.
Sheriff, I've got a mosey. I've got an urgent mission elsewhere. I'm taking the prisoner's car, all right? Sure. The keys are in the ignition. About those two guys in there? Just follow Sushi Douglas's orders. She's the mayor of Douglasville. I'll do that. See you soon, Oscar. Adios, amigo. Bye, Brian. We'll miss you. He was gay, wasn't he, Mud? What? It's amazing how Sushi helped me put all the pieces together, isn't it? She's an amazing girl. I picked up Gina at Mama Dorita's house. Her leg had almost totally healed, so we headed for the Mojave Bank. We got there at dusk. That wouldn't be a problem. Sushi made sure it was the kind of bank where customers can do transactions at any time of day. We were pretty scared, but it turned out getting the money was simpler than we expected. you believe it? There I was, driving a car stolen from a bunch of murderers with a beautiful woman at my side and 20 million bucks in the trunk. We ditched the car and checked into a luxury hotel. Throwing caution to the wind, Gina insisted we get the best room in the hotel, the honeymoon suite, obviously for newlyweds. So we signed in under bogus names, pretending we just got hitched. Let me tell you guys, that sure made up for the bad days I've had. Gina and I, well, let's just say we had time to get more up close and personal. One morning when we went down to breakfast, we read in the newspaper that two guys' bodies had shown up riddled with bullets in a New York alley. Their description left no room for doubt. It was definitely Gustav and Theodore. They didn't give any further information in the paper, but I can imagine what went down. Stop lying, you leeches. Where's the money? I swear we don't have it, Don Roberto. That tramp's little friend is smarter than we thought. He framed us. So what about that telephone call? I never made that call, Don Roberto. You filthy mutt. Do you think I can't recognize your scratchy, betraying voice, you cellar rat? We aren't lying, Don Carlo. We would never betray you guys. Roberto, perhaps they aren't deceiving us. Gustav and Theodore are our best men, and they've always been loyal. I know, Carlo. I know. But unfortunately, loyalty comes at a hefty premium these days. And I guess losing it for $20 million isn't a bad deal. So, let's see if your faithful boys have an explanation for this.
It was tucked away very nicely in Gustav's wallet. Hey, you scumbags. Hey, nobody laughs at Carlos Andretti to his face. No, Don Carlos, don't do it. Hey! Damn it, Carlo. If they're dead, we'll never get back the money. I don't care. We got more than enough dough. The most important thing is that nobody else will be enjoying our money. Everything turned out all right after all. And frankly, I felt no remorse for those two killers. I was just sorry the Sandrettis didn't get what they deserved, too. Anyway, even though it was unlikely that the Sandrettis would follow up on the matter, it was safer for Gina to take a long vacation where nobody'd recognize her. The Cayman Islands seemed like the perfect place. Gina insisted I go with her, but I... Well, look, I just couldn't. I'd worked so hard to earn my chance to study at Berkeley, I, I couldn't just throw it all away. We made it. Brian, are you sure you don't want to come with me? No, Gina. I worked really hard to be able to come here, and I can't just let it all go by the wayside. Whatever you want. I'm gonna miss you. I'll miss you, too. But it's for the best. This is where I belong. You could always take a year off, and then... That wouldn't work. Be happy, Gina. See you soon. I'd be happier with stubborn old you. Goodbye. Why do I feel like a total idiot? What did you forget now? Well, something tells me you're dying to come with me. Am I right? Maybe, but what about you? M what about me? Are you dying for me to go with you? Of course. You know that, silly. Well... Now that I think about it, Berkeley's been here for over a hundred years, so... I guess it can wait one year more. <laughs>